Hello all, I'm Scott Grove here today with another new guitar. Another new old one, I actually did a uh, little cleaning review on when this showed up yesterday. So if everybody wanted to see how she finally turned out, um, there she be. Okay, this is 100% original factory stock, blah blah blah, 1984 Gibson Explorer 3. Has three P90 pickups in it. Okay, so this is part of what they call their designer series. This is uh, the year before Gibson was sold. So they were doing some wild and wacky things. Um, no camouflage on the back anywhere. Just that pea green color that Linda Blair threw up in uh, The Exorcist. Okay, so this is the actual colors. Um, you can feel the colors. Let me see if I can get any kind of light here that shows you that. So it's not like they put all the different colors on then clear coated it and make it look nice, but you can feel this color change to this color change to this color. So I mean you feel each of these colors. So it's paint on top of paint on top of paint. And so bad of a thing that um it's gonna be hard to see because it's hard to see. Of course you see the made in USA. Guess what? This is the uh let me look. <laughs> yeah, it's directly above it. Right above the Made in the USA, so right here is actually the serial number. I don't know if I can even get it close enough for you to see it. There you go, you can see an 8. Uh, there's an 8 here. Oh, 08 something, then it'll be 4, and it does continue. If you get it just in the right light, you can see it. But Gibson used so much paint on a lot of these things that they actually filled in everything they stamped into the wood. So you can hardly read their own stuff, but that's just Gibson quality control. Okay, um, it's the, one of the coolest explorers I think there is, you know, whether you like the camo paint job or not, you know, that's not the uh, point. Um, the point here is to show you stuff that you've maybe never seen before. I've got another one of these guitars, um, identical except for it's black, uh, oh, it was black, it's no longer black, that's right, I could not stand to see all the uh, finish checking like I will show you here in a second that happens to nitro guitars okay so the nitro finished um so my other black one that i did a review on you can just put in scott grove you know gibson explorer 3 and that whole review will show up on that guitar too um so it'll be the same basic review uh people want to know how the wiring's done you know, the pickup selections i'll show you all that of course um the black guitar that's off being redone is being done in a poly finish polyurethane so it will not crack like these do. Um, I found the thing sent from Mr. David Anderson who builds some of the greatest guitars out there. For you people who know who I'm talking about and have been trying to order stuff, I've asked him, has anybody ordered anything from you through me yet? He said no. He said he gets a bunch of teenage kids wanting BC Rich copies for $300. So if you want a custom guitar, you have to pay for a custom guitar. So leave him alone unless you have a serious request because the guy does amazing work. Anyway, the other one I'm having my other Explorer 3, like this, is coming back this color. So this green that flip-flops into a blue, and it's metallic. Okay, so there it is kind of blue. There you can see. There you can see the green, and the whole guitar is going to be done, done that way. Headstock and all, blah, blah, blah. And this here is actually a fretboard that he was working on that he sent me, just for a color sample. But, I mean, painted fretboards are great. Maple as this is. I mean that's that's a fretboard. So I'm actually having another seven string V built with you know yellow and black maple fingerboard like this and covered in the poly so it will be wonderful and you'll never have to clean it. Okay so back to this guitar. Um, let's show you the checking real quick. This is just typical um, nitrocellulose and people not putting them in the uh, right kinds of temperatures and so forth. So you see the cracking there. You can see tons of cracking there. This is typical of if you don't take care of your guitar. This does not have to look. There's some more. It's everywhere. Um, <laughs> if you don't take care of your guitars and keep the right humidity and temperatures, this will happen to all of your nitro finished guitars. Um, same thing. There you go. Check it out. It's everywhere. So that's just what they will look like. 
So again, last time, uh, temperature makes a huge difference, especially with the nitro. Uh, keep her around 70 degrees. And humidity, fit, um, sorry, 40% up to about 55%. Otherwise, um, you're going to have stuff that looks like this if you don't take care of it. Get another guitar to take to gigs that will withstand it. Here you can see with the lights on, especially like right here, that you can see how the paint is raised. Um, if you don't like the finish, don't leave a negative just because you don't like the finish. I'm here teaching you about guitars. I, I don't want a negative because you don't like the finish. Um, you give me a positive or a negative on whether you like the actual review because I'm telling you a shitload of stuff about something that you guys have never seen before. And that's what gets me off is telling you because you guys have never seen one of these. I'm betting you. <laughs> okay, so they come in black. They come in the, this color. They come in red. And I have just found out and seen one for sale. It also comes in the uh, designer series that some of you know about where it actually has pinstriping on it. So they did it in that too. And they come with um, three different bridges. They will come with the uh, horrible, 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 typical. There you go. That two nomadic bridge. And then they came with a Kaler. And they also came with, in 1984, they came with what was called the uh, Gibson Master Tune Vibrola, which was made by Schaller back in 84 only and was on a bunch of guitars, but people um, generally didn't buy them. They had roller bridges, which were great, but people are just not educated enough to buy get real guitars, so those were the real guitars with the roller bridges. Amazing, you could put every saddle exactly where you wanted it, this way or that way, and every way, and it would never go out of tune, no friction, no knife edge bullshit where the strings run over the strings like that. And, your uh, saddles actually cut your strings in half, none of that stuff. Rollers, just like on a pedal steel guitar. Uh, that's the way guitars are supposed to be made, but they're not. So here's what you end up with, okay? So there you go. Um, one cavity cover in the back. Um, a lot of uh, crest toothpaste on the back, so no other cavities. So cavity free, and we are actually belt buckle free on the back and crack free. I don't know why. Somebody said crack for free. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> okay, so let's check this puppy out. Here's how she's wired, kids. We have two switches. So it's just master volume, master tone. You saw yesterday I replaced the bogus knobs that were on here and put some uh, um, period correct uh, knobs on here. So you have two different things. Okay, this one is actually the pickup selector switch okay and I'll show you how that works this one here is actually kind of a mode switch up top so you got this back one yes one's supposed to have a black cap one's supposed to have a white cap in this order if they're not that way and you're buying one then you'll know what color they're supposed to be originally because this was never shown according to my good friend who I trust immensely who has more guitars than I do and all his nitro stuff is in great shape because he kept them in great shape Okay, so I uh, appreciate that, but he, he shows me some of his guitars, his old Gibson ones, and they are perfect. From the day they were bought, they've been kept in the case and in the original boxes. Uh, just superior collection. So the Nitro stuff can hold up if you're not a dumbass. Okay, so keep your guitars in the proper conditions. Okay, so um, switch up. Back here, your mode switch, I will call it. I call this Gibson mode, up and top. In the middle, I call it fender mode, and in the bottom is just other, okay? Here's what everything does before I play it. When it's up, that is like any regular, typical two-pickup Gibson guitar. So if your pickup switch is down, you get your bridge pickup. If it's in the middle, you get both of these pickups. The middle one does not exist in this mode. And if you put it up, you get the neck pickup. So just like any typical two-pickup guitar and it, they are noisy because they're P90s and they're single coiled. Okay, now here's what happens that is beautiful. And this is what I like it for. I'm a country player, okay? So I like things to be quiet as a mouse and twangy as I'll get up, but I hate strats and tellies the way they look. Okay, they sound great, but they just, I just love, love goofy looking shit like this. You know, this is, this is my thing. 
I love these and Icemans and Flying V's, and, but I like them to sound country. So when you go to the middle with your mode switch, all of a sudden that introduces the middle P90, which is reverse wound. So everything is quiet in all three positions. What happens now is when your pickup selector is down, you get the Strat sound. These two pickups, dead quiet. Okay, so they're in hum canceling mode. So everything in this position, the middle position, is totally quiet. So you have these two on, sounds like a Strat in the two position. Put it in the middle. Now you have all three pickups on, and it's dead quiet. You never get that. All three pickups on, dead quiet. And then up, you get the other Strat sound, which is both of these together with the middle one reverse wound so you, they are dead quiet. So the guitar sounds like a Strat but with more balls. Okay, so it sounds perfect for country stuff. And then it sounds great for blue stuff because you're back in Gibson mode back here when you have just the regular P90 kick-ass sound. Okay, what's the down button here? When you push it down, this does not matter. It don't matter where you have this. When you push that down, it goes straight to your only configuration that has not been done yet, and that is the middle pickup on by itself. And it hums, because it's just nothing else with it to make it hum canceling. So it's just reverse wound and not in conjunction with anything else. So you just get the extra configuration. So that's the way she works. Let's do all those in clean mode. Okay, again, the Johnson Millennium amp, yes, reverb, I love it. And uh, I'll do just a chord or two instead of a whole bunch of songs, just so you can hear the actual tone without distortion. You hear the guitar. So I'm going up to Gibson mode. So right now, we're going down to the bridge pickup all by itself, okay? Put it in the middle, you get these two pickups just like any other Gibson guitar with two P90s. And up is the neck position, just one P90. Okay, so typical P90 sounds. Okay, now we put our mode switch in the middle. We're going to quack land. Okay, remember Tali sounds are twangy. Strats are known for quack, two different things. Okay, so now, put the pickup selector all the way down. We have these two pickups. Which is great for like a compressor. is all shit but on a guitar like this so it is amazing and way ahead of its time you can take one guitar to the gig cover everything instead of having to reach down grab your Les Paul grab your telly grab your Strat this does it all and it looks cool this is Ted Nugent looking shit right here we're talking camo this was at the time of Desert Storm okay you guys don't remember that that's kind of like the wars we just had but you know longer ago so the camo was of its time Okay, it's not there just to look goofy. It was actually a um, troops support kind of salute thing. Okay, so, you know, um, things were about being American at that particular point. Um, so sh shoot Gibson for wanting to be a slight bit patriotic. Hey, they didn't do a flag design. They did camo for Desert Storm colors. Okay, so that's what this was all about. Okay, in the middle, like I told you, all three single coils. With the compressor. Same thing with the pickup selector up is going to be these two in totally hum canceling strat mode now just to remind
remind you and to compare that to what the uh, Gibson mode was. Back to Gibson mode and now we're just going to do both pickups. Gibson, but you have the noise of P90s, but in the middle, noise gone, and then you have all the strat sounds. Okay, only thing left is the middle pickup by itself, and the only way you can get that is to take the mode switch, the black tip, which you can hardly see, just push it down, that's the middle pickup by itself. <laughs> Just, um, I've never been a fan of the middle pickup by itself and compressor over here. Okay, so it's a little more livable with a compressor. A compressor uh, just changes the world and makes your guitar sound great. Okay? Uh, only you can prevent guitar sounds without compressors. Should be outlawed. Okay, so let's go back to Gibson mode and throw on a couple distortion things and I'll be done with it. That's basically the guitar. Again, everything is normal as all Gibsons are. It's the typical mahogany and then the rosewood fingerboard. And um, you can check out the other video when I bought this and it came in yesterday, what it looked like. It was like I have an hour long video that will be the video right before this if you look in my channel. Um, from what it looked like when I got it to what it looks like now. It was a real pile of crap when I got it. Everything was rusted, the frets were rusted, everything else was rusted. The guitar was just a steaming pile of crap. And now it's actually beautiful, but cracked, which is fine, because that's what they do. And I will not be replacing the uh, finish on this. No way, no how. Um, I've already got people writing on the other one saying, uh, press thumbs down if you think this thing looks like shit. You know, it's like, dude. <laughs> Uh, show me a picture of you or your boyfriend, then let me tell you what you know. I think about how you look and how he looks and so forth. So, it's not about that. I'm here to teach you guys some shit. Like I said, not one of you have ever seen one of these. Well, the one guy has, but nobody else has ever seen one. There is one more on eBay right now for $2,000 with the Kaler system. Okay, so that's about what these run. People, they are, if they have cracks and so forth, they run about $2,000. If you could find a clean one, you can get it up to close to $3,000. Okay, so that's what these are going for. Okay? You're like, I ain't paying it. It's like, I know you ain't paying it because you ain't got it because you ain't got no job. <laughs> um, luckily, I have a job and I get to stay at home and do it. And part of it is actually this. This is actually part of my job. Because I get to write, as long as I do a uh, demo on this guitar, it is now part of my website and now becomes a tax write off. So now the couple grand I spent on this is a tax write-off from my guitar lessons videos and because it's on my website with my guitar lessons. So this is teaching you things. This is um, exactly that. It's instructional. So take it as that. All my, all my videos are meant to be instructional. I don't care whether you like the guitars or you don't, but at least you learn something when you come here. I'm not going to spend the whole day, like I say, playing your favorite um, oh, horrible. Oh, let's find something really nasty. Um, <laughs> this will not be happening on here. <laughs> you know, that's not going to be happening here. Um, you hear the basic sounds of the guitar. Distortion sounds like distortion on every guitar. It's just a big mess. Um, some you can barely make out if you don't put too much distortion on it and you actually just give it a little chance uh, like this. I'll go to the Strat sound. No, I won't. Let's use a P90 right up here on the neck. Okay, so a P90 neck pickup. Um, same thing I've been using now. I'm just going to throw a tiny bit of tube overdrive. Yes, my amp has two 12AX7 tubes in the preamp section. So it is part tube. So you're hearing real tubes here. So it's just not in the power amp section at all. Okay, so here you go. <laughs>
Okay, so this bitch gets ah. down. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Pure P90 heaven right there in my Gibson mode. So that was just the neck pickup, the way a P90 is supposed to sound. Blast into a couple of 12AX7 tubes and then just simply amplified by any means necessary. Do power amp tubes really make a difference? Not really, people. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about that on another thing. Um, Preamp, yes, it, ca it can and it does. That's how you use it and if you know how to use it. Otherwise, getting a tube amp just for the sake of a tube amp is just retarded or guitarded. Um, and like I said, it's a whole different thing. This is about this guitar. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Let's go to strap mode. Uh, all three pickups with that same amplifier setting. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, these two pickups. Or just the middle pickup. Okay, so there are different sounds with just a slight bit of crunch where things actually sound good. Uh, like, um, I don't know, let's go to strap mode again. <laughs> sound you know the, the good old it sounds like a strap but better because it has balls it's not quite as wimpy okay and like I said distortion is distortion so let's go to I don't know keep it in strap mode and on these two pickups okay and balls to the wall distortion um, a friend of mine likes sweet leaf from uh, Sabbath so we'll go there and do that <laughs> distortion same distortion let's go to less pause and let's go to the it's on the bridge pickup so one p90 right here all by itself same mode okay and hell uh <laughs> Tremo verb, 
bring the volume down a little bit. Let's stay, uh, I don't know, one pickup right here. It's cool in a sick way. Uh, I think sick means bad in this particular decade. I'm not sure. But there you go. And like I said, Exorcist Pea Soup Green right there, boy. And so much paint that it fills up the uh, serial number. Typical Gibson. Typical nitro negligence. Again, the nitro can hold up if you keep it right. But then again, most of the world is not set up in optimal condition. So it, the shit's going to crack. <laughs> unless you just keep it nice and it will continue to crack now that it has begun just like a windshield crack once it starts it's over kids so once again I'm Scott Grove here just wasting your whole day but hey I've had a good time today and I have some more cool guitars coming in um, god what I order um, <laughs> I've got a custom shop strap coming in from 92 I think it's like the strap pluses up here but it's custom shop and it has a dually, you know, the lace sensors back here. And but it's all gold metal flake. And that sucker was expensive, but it's coming in any day now. Um, oh, I bought another one of these. I finally found it. The uh, 79 Antigua strap. Same, you know, same as this one. But um, hardtail, so no anti. So that's coming in. I finally found one. That was really expensive. And it's about three grand for it, but I found it finally, so I get to cross it off the list. Um, I've got a few more that I've ordered, so stick around, and then, um, I can't remember what all they are. <laughs> I just see them, I like them, I get them, and I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to do that. And for those of you who actually buy my lessons, you are why I get to buy guitars. Um, what else do I do with it? Nothing. I don't save the money. I pay the bills and I buy guitars. That's what I do. <laughs> and it's a blast. I love this stupid shit, but um, again, I am just a sucker for the goofy shit, but that sounds single coily and country. That's what I'm concerned with. It has to sound country to hang with me. Everybody's like, well, why don't you just get like a, you know, $80,000 Strat and get rid of about 100 guitars in there and have that. Because like, it don't sound good to me. It's got a three-way switch. It's got pickups that are all noisy. I know, yeah, you can try to cram them in there, but it's still not a reverse pickup thing. And that's why there's nothing made for me before 1976, Fender-wise, and nothing before 75, Gibson-wise, that I like. You know, yeah, I could have those and have them around, but why? I, I, I want guitars around that I would actually play, you know, somewhere. So that's that, if anybody needs to know that again. I've told the story a million times, but I want to be surrounded by guitars that I really, really like and that are just country as I'll get out and hopefully goofy as shit like this and get to teach you people about them. That's half the fun is teaching you about them. The part that's not fun is just the morons who have to pipe in and say shut the fuck up and play and that kind of stuff or man if you think that guitar is gross and sucks balls you know hit the thumbs down. It's like dude I'm doing you a favor you know it's like biting the hand that feeds you. It's like come here and learn 
you know, I'm sure you're not learning in school either. You know, you don't learn by jacking off. You know, that's not practicing for sex really, so quit doing it. Okay? <laughs> uh, maybe once you actually get some pussy, you'll uh, straighten up and learn to appreciate other things once you get your mind off that. Okay, so once again, this is me with this, and I'm out. Okay? Bye.